prove this result. So each xi is an exponential random variable. Uh, and wow, well, there's a key part actually I need. Um, independence, damn it. I keep forgetting to write independence. We need independence. Let's try that again. All right, let's do this. So this is the setup. I want to prove this result. It's actually quite easy to prove. What is going on here? We have a bunch of random variables. Um, I'm calling them uh, xi. Okay, and this is for, I should have written here, for i equals one up to n. So I have n exponential independent, absolutely need independence, random variables, okay? And part of my assumption is that each of these random variables has, uh, n well, a lot of times the perimeter is lambda, but specifically, the expectation is lambda i for each xi. What's the conclusion? The conclusion is that the expected value of m, where m is the minimum of all these random variables, independent random variables, is equal to this business here. It looks kind of complicated, confusing, but it's really not. It's really not that bad. It's really not that hard to prove either. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's hope I can fit it all in this just one board right here. So uh, again, here's the min, right? This is my m. Right? I just want to find the CDF of the min. Okay, let's let's see what's up with that, right? So um, the CDF of the min, so we have a proof. We have that the CDF of the min, capital F M of M, by definition, by definition, this is equal to the probability that m is less than or equal to m. Now, if you're familiar with this sort of game regarding max and min, you know exactly what we need to do here. I cannot deal with this. The min is less than m. So that says nothing, well, nothing valuable. But what I can say is I can write this uh, as the complement. This is equal to 1 minus the probability that the min, capital M, is strictly greater than m. This is something you can deal with regarding the minimum. Think about it for a second. You want to get the logic down here. If the minimum is greater than some m, that means all of my random variables are greater than m. Okay, I'm taking this list. I'm saying that this, the, the min of this list is greater than m. That means the smallest one is greater than m. That means all of them have to be greater than m. Excellent. So uh, this tells me that this is 1 minus right, the probability that every single one is greater than m. So probability that x1 is greater than m and x2 is greater than m all the way to xn greater than m. Boy, oh boy, you barely fit that. You know what's going on over there xn is greater than m. Now we use independence. Now we use independence. We need that because now this says that this is 1 minus the probability uh, that x1 is strictly greater than m times intersection terms of multiplication when the random variables are independent times the probability that x2 is greater than m all the way to the probability that x n is greater than m. If you know a thing or two about a thing or two regarding the exponential distribution, you know that you're pretty much done right here, right? You're pretty much done because what is the PDF? I apologize for previous videos. I keep saying PDF when I mean PMF sometimes. This actually is a PDF, right? Because it's a continuous random variable. You know what I mean. You know what I mean, damn it. Don't mess with my mind like that. Well, and I'll start messing with your mind by saying that. I'll try to. All right, back to my mission here. What is the PDF of 
is the exponential random variable. Right? And I guess I'll just, I don't even want to write it down. You should know it. Look at my previous videos, right? This is the survival function of the exponential random variable. Not too bad, just one minus the CDF. One minus the CDF, right? So this is equal to, this is equal to uh, one minus, all right, survival function of x1. Well, that has expectation uh, lambda i, or sorry, lambda one. So this is um, e, this is e to the um, negative lambda one m times e to the negative lambda two sorry this is one over my apologies m over lambda one because the expectation is lambda one which means in terms of my writing it as my my distribution it's divided by divided by m over lambda two all the way up to e to the negative m divided by lambda m you should be saying to yourself, we're done. And thank God, I don't want to compute an integral. I mean, how annoying is that, right? I don't want to do that, we're not going to. This is equal to one minus E, factor out an M, to the negative one over lambda one plus all the way down to one over lambda N times M. A lot of probability and statistics from what I'm gathering because I'm self teaching myself I'm teaching myself all of this stuff a lot of it is pattern recognition you need to recognize what this is what is this what is this this is the CDF this is the CDF well uh, actually yeah this is the CDF of an exponential random variable exactly what this is. This guy right here, recognize that this, this is the CDF. This is a cumulative distribution of an exponential random variable with mean, aka expectation, equal to that, with mean one over one, uh, yeah, lambda one plus one over lambda two, one over lambda n. That's absolutely what's going on. Remember how this works, right? I mean, what is this CDF? Just just a regular, um, just a regular exponential exponential distribution look like? Okay, if it's say one minus e to the negative lambda m, then you know the expected value of m is equal to one over lambda. Okay, we'll have the same thing here, but I have this annoying factor right here. But if you take in terms of the expectation, it's it's one over this. It's one over that whole thing. So hopefully you're convinced. If you're not, that's fine. Tell me why you're not, and I can elaborate. Comment on the video. Thank you.